Hello, this is Solar PV TV once again from Dubai, from the eighth Desert Energy Leadership Summit. And now we are with one of the leaders here in the region, with Daniel Zivitz, who is uh, CEO of Enerware. We spoke with Daniel, I think, like uh, one year and a half. And already it was quite a successful company. Starting here, uh, I think it was around 10 megawatts in total, more or less. And uh, I would like to ask you now, Daniel, how is the Enerware uh, developing? Thank you. Yeah, things are going well. Um, we're more than doubling our business this year, and yes, we're deploying more capacity. I think we're up to close to 25 megawatts overall power capacity right now, um, both here in the Middle East and in Africa. So we're finally expanding our footprint beyond the UAE. Um, we opened our office uh, in Nigeria, in Kanu in the north. Um, we're just opening an office in Oman. Um, we're looking at Puerto Rico and Pakistan. So yeah, growing rapidly. So, uh, do you apply the same business model like in uh, Emirates, in other countries, or you are, ha you are having different business models, different products? I think generally we're looking at the same business model because it's the same type of customer. We're serving the uh, commercial and industrial market, and providing free solar education is interesting to everyone, but doesn't pay at least our bills. So, uh, most of the time we, we don't sell as EPC, but we actually provide full power purchase agreements. Uh, right now in Nigeria, the funding situation is still difficult, the currency, uh, so th those are EPC projects, but in most other countries we serve as a full utility company, day and night, providing kilowatt hours or even cooling. So, uh, what, uh, because I, I heard about your recent project in Nigeria, yes, so can you tell us more about this project? Yeah, so apparently I hear that we have the largest operating solar power plant in Nigeria. I have to say I find that very hard to believe it's only 73 kilowatts, but it is operating. Uh, since June of this year. Um, the other thing is we do have a mo megawatt of modules that just arrived uh, about two weeks ago in, in Nigeria, so those will be installed in the next few weeks. And then it does look like we actually have the largest power plant, the solar large solar power plant in Nigeria. There's a lot of talk in that market, a lot of 100 megawatt plus uh, power purchase agreements being signed, but, um, but very few people have actually built something because it's hard. Um, it took us two and a half years, nearly, to get the, the 73 kilowatts up and running between the currency crisis, the customs, the paperwork. Um, so I think it's hard. We've gotten at least something up and running, and we're looking to grow that as quickly as we can. So we are focusing not on the big, large projects, but on the smaller in Nigeria? Well, again, I think it's the commercial and industrial market that is naturally between 50 kilowatts and about 10 megawatts. Um, naturally, people want to see some smaller pilot projects before they're committing um, a full factory uh, and larger amounts. So, so as in any new market, we first have to show and demonstrate that it works, that it doesn't blow up, that the machinery uh, is, is not being damaged by the solar. People have all kinds of fears. As that um, works now, the neighbors are giving us calls and saying, hey, you know, I'd like to lower my power cost too. So uh, I think it's always a process. It doesn't start on day one. Uh, it starts on the day you have an actual reference project. We have that up and running, and now it will go faster. So Daniel, uh, I remember that uh, you were focused 100% uh, almost, 100% on the off-grid, yes? Yes. And uh, are you still uh, you know, focused on off-grid, or you are also working on on-grid systems? We have about two-thirds of our revenue right now in, in off-grid systems. Uh, the remainder is from what we call well, on-grid or weak grid situations. And in fact, you see that the difference between on-grid and off-grid is shrinking because on the grid, you're starting to see a higher solar share, which means that grid stability becomes more critical. And at the same time, um, many, many areas in the Middle East and Africa are actually weak grid situations where s grid is available, but not necessarily at the price, the capacity, and the stability and reliability that people are looking for. So we provide that bridge. We can like a supplementary. Yeah, supplementary. We, we can take over all of the utility functions or we can provide uh, that for part of the time or for a temporary period where we supply off-grid for two or three years and then we connect our system to the grid. So I think in the end that distinction is uh, sounds very hard in, in the wording in reality on in the operations. Um, that distinction is shrinking, and, and so we service commercial and industrial customers that have a significant power demand, um, and, and then we figure out where, how it's connected. That comes at a later stage in many ways. So last time uh, when we spoke, uh, it was, actually, I think it was one year and a half, more or less, ago, and uh, since then, uh, there was a huge uh, development on the storage, yes? 
and uh, how did you notice, you know, and how did uh, this development influence your business? Well, I think we've noticed primarily in the pricing uh, of the storage. We did our first storage project actually in 2014, at the end of 2013, beginning of 2014. Um, that was with very small uh, hybrid inverters and lead acid batteries. Um, it was very expensive. It cost a lot of engineering time, and the batteries lasted for a year and a half. So we decided at the time that it wasn't worth the hassle and, and then continue to do solar diesel hybrid projects for uh, several years. But recently, the battery prices have come down far enough that for specific applications, particularly for high power peak shaving um, applications, it makes sense to use them. And we have recently installed our first commercial scale battery project here in the UAE. Do you think that uh, there will be a tendency uh, from switching uh, from uh, hybrid uh, solutions to solar, spl solar plus storage? Well, I think there's still solar hybrid solutions. Look, batteries are by and large still too expensive to use to run 100% on, on solar and batteries. So I think what you'll see is that you'll, uh, that you'll get batteries introduced as another component of a hybrid system. So effectively, try hybrid between solar, diesel, batteries, maybe even some other forms, wind or gas, natural gas. So um, I think they're a component, again, not a 100% solution. There are very few silver bullets. And, and we're now building up the expertise and the first reference projects with actual batteries in this climate and in industrial settings, right? Which is, again, something that clients want to see. Um, it has technical advantages, but, uh, but the type of clients we deal with are risk adverse. Um, they're not necessarily first adopters. Uh, so, so, again, we need to build it up slowly. And, and, again, that fits well with our business model because they don't have to take the, the CapEx risk, the technology risk. So, last question. Uh, uh, when we spoke, you know, last year, you were operating only in the country. You were dreaming about uh, going abroad, yes? So yes. now dream is becoming, you know, true, yes? yes. So uh, when uh, anywhere will be everywhere? <laughs> well, I think as long as we stick with the, with the solar uh, thing in our logo, um, I think we, we'll kind of focus on the sunny regions of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we're, we're branching out, right? We started at least with Middle East and Africa. We're definitely uh, getting traction there. Um, we're looking a little bit further east and west. And, um, and yeah, as, as solar becomes cheaper, as storage becomes cheaper, there will be a lot more areas that will not be connected to the grid. And, and we hope to serve those, those areas and those clients. Exactly. So it means that uh, in the future we'll have anywhere, everywhere where there is a sun. Yes? Very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. That was Solar PV TV together with uh, Daniel Zivitz, who is CEO, founder of Enerware. Thanks for watching.